Hey guys, welcome to chapter four, and this will be the section, the second part of section one or section two. I haven't really decided yet, but regardless, in this section we're going to be creating our models um, and database tables. So if you can recall, uh, we've talked about MVC quite a bit, which is Model View Controller, and we have created. We created a home controller for our home page and we also created a post controller and for the, in that controller we also created um, a couple post related views so we have our controllers and views set for the posts now what we need to do is create the model uh, which will interact with the database um, so the first thing we need to do is open up our shell prompt you can click on the git bash icon that should have came with the Heroku tool belt, I believe. And when you open it, it, it puts you in your user directory, and that's not where you want to be if you're on Windows. You want to be in your Sites folder and then in your App folder. So let's change directory to the C Drive Sites folder. And then one more time, we want to switch to uh, My Ruby Blog. And if you list the contents, it should look like this. So what we need to do here is I'm going to first create the categories model and then we'll do the, the post model. So uh, before we do that, I actually just want to check on the controller in views. So I'm going to go into uh, sites, my Ruby blog, and just take a look at the app folder and the controllers. So the application controller uh, comes with Rails and then whatever controls we add will extend upon that. So we did create a home controller and a post controller which I'll open now just to uh, refresh my mind. And we've created all the actions. Um, actually this doesn't look right. Uh, so we get the index, the new, the create. Uh, this shouldn't be here. This this DEF so just if you have that too just delete that so we get the edit the update the show and destroy and all we did was create a instance variable uh, any variable with that at sign in, in Ruby is a instance variable and we just put this text in there and then we went ahead and went in the view and I think it was the post index view and then we just echoed out or printed out those instance variables. So what we want to do now is have we don't want to define the, the data in a variable like this. We want this we want our instance variables to grab from the database um, and use that. So we need to create a model to do that. And we're gonna have categories and posts. Um, so I'm just gonna create the categories first and you can generate a model much like you do with a controller um, by doing Rails G, or just G or generate, and then model, and then what you want to call your model. Now this is very important, uh, your model needs to be singular. Guys, I just recorded and, and ran it back and there was no sound on the video, so I have to uh, go back and just show you what commands I used. Okay, so I already ran it. I'm not going to run it again. I'm just going to show you um, what you should be doing. So we left off at Rails generate model. And the first model we want to create is the category model. So you want to do Rails G model and then you want to do category. Okay, it's very important that you use uh, singular category because models are singular and control is a plural. So you want to do Rails generate model category and then you want to put the fields that we want um, in the categories table and we're going to do just name and that's a string. Okay, so that's what you want to do um, and it will just create the, the migrate file and it will create our model. So if I go to where I ran it, let me just find it real quick. I did it right here. Rails G model category name string and you might get this security warning it's just something to do with the sessions uh, just ignore that and then you'll see 
down here it says invoke active record and uh, you should be seeing this uh, it created um, what's called a uh, database migration file um, what it is is it just is the SQL or the query that we want to run to create the ca categories table in the database uh, it hasn't created it yet we actually have to run the migration file for that to create um, you'll also see it created a models it created a category file in our models directory um, and it also invoked some tests which we'll be looking into later alright so after that after you run the, and generate the model you just want to run rake db migrate now when you run that if we go down where I ran it right here uh, what it does is it just puts those those queries those um, the SQL into action and it actually creates the tables the categories table on your local database which is the Postgres database and we can actually check that out by going to the PG admin program uh, one second now we use this in previous chapters and this is our local database so I'm going to connect to mine and if we go to databases uh, it should be the my Ruby blog database and we go down to schema public and then tables if we click on tables you'll see there's our categories table right here this is what the migration file created so if you go down you can actually see the programming that was run to create it um, it create created the name this is the name field that we created as well as the timestamps that I talked about and it also created a primary key of categories underscore p key so this is what we would use to identify uh, whatever category we're looking for which we can also use this in our post table um, for our posts because every post will have a category so now let's go back and create our post model I'm gonna exit out of this extra command line and we're gonna do rails g model and this is gonna be post remember singular has to be post and now what are we going to use? Let me go back to our Excel file from the last section. And our posts are going to have a string, a t uh, body, uh, sorry, a title, a body, a category ID, and an author ID. So let's create those. We're going to do that like this. The title is going to be a string, um, body is going to be text um, we'll say category ID is going to be integer and author ID will also be an integer um, I think that's it that's all we need to do here let's run that alright so it created uh, another migration file and again you don't have to keep track of these migration files um, rake knows which ones to use what the latest ones are and what hasn't been run so um, now we can run that we'll just do rake uh, db migrate and it created our table let's go back to postgres uh, postgres whatever you want to call it uh, and click on tables and it's not there um, notice primary key will present post b key oh sorry I just needed to reload uh, if you're using this PG admin just reload and you'll see the post table was created and it has all our fields here so our database is, is all set at the moment uh, like I said we're going to be using an uh, a program called active admin 
that we'll be dealing with our users table because in this particular application we're just going to have a blog poster or an admin login we're not going to have um, other front-end logins so it'll only be admins so the last thing I want to do here is where we're using Heroku to deploy we need to run we need to run the rake migrate command um, for the Heroku site as well so we want to do Heroku um, run rake and then DB migrate Whoop, sorry about that. All right, so that should, this, these are just some uh, deprecation um, warnings. Don't worry about that if you're getting those. Uh, and after you run that, we want to, um, let's just push everything to Heroku. So we have, so it matches our local site. So we want to do git add all, and then we want to do git commit am and we'll just say uh, Roku update you can write whatever you want here it's just a comment and then finally we need to do git push Heroku master and that should push everything we have up to this point to the Heroku site And we can visit our hosted app. Now you probably couldn't have used the name MyRubyBlog. Uh, well, you couldn't because it's it's all these subdomains are unique. So uh, I would suggest using. Well, you already did if you did this, but. Um, hopefully you use something like my Ruby blog 2 or, or something like that all right so this is my home page so uh, it looks like it's still uploading I just wanna uh, reload it after everything's said and done just to make sure um, it's up to date just to make sure it's running right so if we reload looks good um, Let's go to post. I forget exactly which can, which views we have. Yeah, so if we go to post index. All right, so everything looks good from the remote site as well. So I think that's a good place to stop in the next in the next section or the next chapter. Uh, I believe we're going to be doing uh, some some relational database stuff. So we want to relate the category, for instance, the category ID to the category ID in the post table. Um, so we'll be doing that. We'll also be doing some CRUD, which is create, read, update, and delete. So we'll be able to do those things to our posts and categories. Uh, so I will see you in the next video.